everybody. Thanks for tuning in to us. I'm so glad that you have stopped and took your time. You've scrolled the internet or you've actually looked us up. However you got here, I'm just glad you're here. We've got one of our services, one of our words that we have given, one of our songs uh, we've put out here, and now we're together. The reason we do this is because we feel the Lord has put messages on our hearts, words on our hearts that we can help you. But the main thing is to glorify Him. So thank you for coming by and spending a little time with us. I, I promise, uh, don't just start and stop. Sometimes you got to catch up to me. you got to catch up to uh, everything. But if you'll put the time in, I think you'll find that God's got a word for you. Now, we'll be back in just a few minutes with some other things. And, and so just sit down, hold on, and let God bless you. The message I got this morning is on the cross. Did you know that this, the cross is one of the most talked about subjects that Jesus himself talked about was the cross? Amen. It's one of the least talked about in the modern church. Amen. But we're going to talk about the cross this morning. Let's go to the first Corinthians. We're going to need your Bible. We got it up here on the board. Amen. We got a lot of scriptures this morning. Would you stand with me for the first one? We're going to be in 1 Corinthians 1.18, then we're going to Galatians 6.14, then we're going to St. John 19, 17 and 25. Those will be our four lead-off verses, one right after the other. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Galatians 6.14 But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. St. John 19.17 And bearing his cross he went forth to the place called, he went forth to the place, the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. And then verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clophus, and Mary Magdalene. Amen. I want to preach this morning on this subject. Amen. Take the cross to them. Take the cross to them. Hallelujah. Some of you in here have been around since the beginning of my ministry, which actually started when I was 15 years old. I preached my very first message when I was 15. And uh, that's been a long time. And if every preacher... Pretty much every preacher's got their niche. They do. Some, uh, some have the Holy Spirit. Um, Perry Stone, he, he's prophecy. Different preachers have, they just got, this, there's one subject that they like. Some are faith. Wigglesworth. I have always been a cross man. Before the message of the cross with Jimmy Swagger, when I was 15 years old, my favorite subject in the entire Word of God is the cross of Jesus Christ. And I have preached the cross many times, and the Lord just kind of shook me uh, the other day. I had a couple messages I was thinking about preaching. And the Lord, just out of the blue, said, man, it's been a while. He said, I want you to put a fresh spin on that old message. Amen. A lot, a lot of your modern churches don't sing songs like at the cross. Amen. The old rugged cross. At Calvary. Amen. They don't like it. I remember years ago when the movie, the, the movie The Passion of the Christ came out. And I talked to somebody in this church. In this church. And I said, what did you think of the movie? I didn't like it. 
said, I couldn't stand to see the crucifixion scene and the cross. And I said to them, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I feel it's the greatest movie that's ever been made. Hands down. The greatest movie that's ever been made. I understand it was graphic. Some people said, I couldn't understand it. It wasn't in English. You didn't need to understand English. By the way, I don't know necessarily that we'll be speaking English in heaven. Amen. You better get over that. Amen. But the cross, the cross, and I want you today to take a fresh look at the cross of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ made the cross famous. He endured the cross. It became the most famous symbol in the history of humanity, there is not another symbol that has been on the face of the earth that comes close to that symbol of a cross. One going down and one going across. It has become the most seen, most famous symbol. Listen. If I asked you in here this morning, there might be one or two people that could tell me what the symbol of the Muslim is. It's a huge religion. I know it's got something to do with a sickle and a moon and a star. I don't know. And I don't care. Amen. The world don't know nothing about the symbol of the Muslim religion. And Buddha, the Buddhist, He's just a fat man in underwear. Ain't, the Buddhists ain't even proud of that. That's a fact. Amen. And then uh, the Hindus, the Hindus, now, uh, 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 these are the next biggest religions. The Hindus are so messed up and have so many gods that they don't even have one symbol. Amen. To one, it's a cow. And to another, it's a cat. <laughs> Amen. But the cross. Amen. The cross now. When the world sees that, they know who you are. Amen. Uh, that, that their red cross that started in the American Civil War, after American Civil War, and then it went to the battlefields of, uh, of the first major world war. The enemy, the Germans, the French, the Spanish, everybody knew when they saw the Red Cross. It was medical help that was coming. I mean, the cross, the symbol of the cross, is, it's everywhere. But it's more. Oh, oh, let me back up and put this. I, I think you, you studied this out. The second most famous symbol on the earth, you know what it is? The American flag. Red, white, and blue. Now that's something because they, they may hate us, but they know it. You go anywhere, anywhere. From Africa, the darkest places of Africa to the coldest places of Siberia into the deserts of the Arabians that are surrounded by the Muslim religion. And they understand that. And I got to thinking about that. If that's the second most famous symbol, why is it? Because that symbol was blessed by the first symbol. Amen. The, that symbol was blessed by the first symbol. But the cross is more than just chic. It's more than just status. Amen. It's more than just jewelry or a tattoo or a piece of art. Amen. When, when it's spoken of correctly, when it's carried with authority, all hell trembles at the cross. Laughably, 
Anybody that knows anything about uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, what would make Dracula run when he took that cross? And it's laughable. There's nothing to it other than just a fictitious story. But the truth is the cross pushes back evil. Amen. It's it's not just jewelry to be. I see Sydney's got his old right there. Looking good, brother. Looking good. Amen. But if it's if there's nothing behind it, it ain't no different than any other gold chain or or, or earring or any other thing. You've got to recognize the power of the cross. What does it mean? What does it mean? Rhonda, could you pull 1 Corinthians back up again? The first two verses. 1 Corinthians 1.18. That's John. Amen. There we go. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. My. I've got to preach the cross. I've got to preach the cross. I've got to preach it more. Our churches, someone says, what do our churches need to do? Yes, we need to pray. pray. Yes, we need to fast. Yes, we've got to evangelize. Amen. But ladies and gentlemen, more than anything, we've got to preach Jesus Christ crucified. Jesus Christ, amen, dying. Jesus Christ rising again. We have got to preach the story of the cross. Amen. Someone said, I already know that story. I beg to differ with you. I don't think anybody completely understands what he went through on the cross. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish, to those that don't receive it, to those that are just wearing it around their neck, uh, amen, or see it in a piece of art, but they've never allowed their life to be changed by the power of the crucifixion, amen, to them it is foolishness. The world thinks what I am preaching today, amen, is just colloquialism, that it is means nothing. I'm here to tell you, amen, to the world what I'm preaching. God forbid anybody in this house or anybody listening to me feels this way. Amen, but I've got to stand, amen, and I've got to preach the cross of Jesus Christ. To those that reject it, to those that don't see it, to those that don't receive it, it is foolishness. There are actually, I can name, there are actually churches in this area, big churches in this area. Somebody mentioned a, ch- a church to me uh, the, uh, just recently. Amen. They do not preach the cross. They preach a good feel message. They preach a humanitarian message. But they do not preach the cross. My, I need some help up in here. Amen. I'm preaching to you. Amen. The message that I have been ordained to preach, not just today, but for my entire existence. Amen. The cross of Christ. Someone said, I already know it. No, you don't. Because if you knew more of it, you'd be on your feet with me shouting, Preach, preacher, preach, preacher. The cross of Christ. Amen. To them that reject it. Amen. They, they line up in hell's borders and they're saying if they can hear my message, and I believe they probably can, at least some can. Those that reject it, they would say, Listen to him. Hell would cry, listen to him. The preaching of the cross. But unto us, someone say me. But unto us which are saved, if you are saved. Amen, I'm telling you there ain't no more power than the cross of Jesus Christ. Oh, my, 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 my. 
You may not be able to read. You might not be able to speak. Amen. You might not have much of an education of all. Amen. But if you just say, devil, I claim the cross. Amen. I'm here to tell you there's power, wonder-working power in the blood. The blood that flowed down the cross. There is power to them that are saved in the cross. My, my, my. I didn't know the preacher was going to come out like this. I thought the teacher was going to be here this morning. Amen. But you can't hardly help but begin to preach. Amen. When you're talking about the cross. He said there's power. That's why some of our churches don't have no power. They don't see no healings. They don't see no deliverances. They don't see no victory because they're not preaching the cross. Woo! My, my, my. I believe the preacher showed up this morning. Amen. Someone said, what made the preacher show up? I got good material. Ha, ha. I've got the best material. The cross. Galatians said... Get, take me to Galatians. But God forbid that I should glory. And can't, let me put a little Tom spin on that. But God forbid that I should get excited about anything else. Uh, amen. Anything else. Amen. There's a lot of subjects. We can talk about faith. We can talk about healing. We can talk about joy. We can talk about uh, tithing. We can talk about uh, all fruits. We can talk about this. But God forbid that I should glory in anything but the cross. Some of you in here have done some great things with what God, what you've allowed God to do in your life. Amen. But when you look at the cross... All of that just fades away. When you look at the cross, I should glory in nothing but the cross. I, I, when, when Swigert and them started preaching that message of the cross, I, I remember I was sitting in Lenny Ambrose's barber shop, and me and Lenny was talking about it, and Lenny says, well, shucks, I preached the cross my whole life. I said, yes, we have. I said, but I think there's more to what we've been preaching. Amen. It ain't in the fact that you can speak in tongues that makes you glory. It ain't in the fact that you may have all nine gifts. You may be, be a regular old gift shop. Amen. It's not in the fact that you've run all over the world, did mission strips, and you've done this and that. You maybe you physically built the church. Uh, listen, I, I, there was a couple times we were, we finally got used to that $10,000 piece of concrete out front. Got to play a little cornhole on it yesterday. Uh-huh, that's an inside joke. Amen, we were building that little piece of front. Amen, some, fo some friends of mine came here yesterday, and, and they hadn't seen the new part, and they said, can we go walk around? And they were walking around. And I saw the kids playing, and we, man, wasn't it nice to sit in that big basement air conditioned yesterday? Plenty of room. Amen. And if you didn't, if you wanted to have an old-fashioned picnic, we still were able to go outside and sit under the pavilion. I'm telling you what. Amen. We are blessed. Amen. That means absolutely nothing if I'm not preaching the cross. Amen. This building... And all its splendor means absolutely nothing if we're not living by the cross. Amen. I, I can tell you, I, I love everything about what God has done here. Amen. I love this platform. I, oh, I love the air conditioning today. Amen. I'm glad I'm not in the tent today. Amen. It's coming. Amen. I thank God for the pews. I thank God for my office. I thank God for the, the bathroom, the professional bathroom. Oh, I like a refrigerator. I like everything we got here. But the greatest thing, I'm going to tell you, the greatest thing that I like is at nighttime. When I'm coming off the bridge and I look up here and I see that light. 
on that great, big, huge cross that we got out front. The other day, I went down to the end of my driveway. And there, we had an old wagon wheel down there with a post. And Rhonda wanted me to fix it up. She went and bought another wagon wheel. And I went down there. I was going to straighten the post up. And when I got a hold of it, it just fell over. And I said, oh, my. It was hot. It rotted down at the bottom. And I, I cleaned it all up. And I was driving up the road thinking that I was going to go get another post and put another sign on it, put a wagon wheel on it, make it, you know, decorative, little house on the prairie type thing, you know, that when people drive by, they'll see the wagon wheel and then above it maybe have the name Snyder. And the Holy Ghost convicted me. I said, do you want them to see you? Or do you want them to see me? Hey! Hey! Now listen, I'm, there ain't nothing wrong with je- decorating and things like that, please. But the Lord was just talking to me. Amen. And I went up to get a couple poles, and Dad said, what you need to do is go get you one of them fence posts, these four-inch fence posts. Go in there to tractor the supply. And the Lord began to talk to me more. He said, I want you to build me a cross. He said, you can put your house number on the cross. That means that you're covered by the cross. And I painted, I got me some old paint. And I painted an old piece of wood. Amen. And put the cross right down at the end of my road. And went ahead and blessed Brandon and Crystal on top of it. <laughs> Amen. Just put there because we got the same lane. And put the cross right there. That's only been two weeks. Do you know how many people in two weeks have noticed the cross? Amen. I'm here to tell you when I'm driving across this country, when I see the cross, it speaks to me. Casey, if you would. Amen. The cross of that of Christ. I want you to know something. Not only did Jesus carry the cross and endure the cross, but the cross was his mission from the from the when he was a babe in the manger. From the cradle to the cross, the cross was the mission of Jesus. Amen. Everywhere he went from Genesis to Revelation, if you will look, you will see the symbolism of the cross of Christ. And Jesus himself preached. Just go ahead and roll it on in here, Case. Amen. Jesus himself preached the cross. And I'm going to, I selected some people up here. Just stand there right there, Casey. Get yourself a good, comfortable place. Amen. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. Oh, so I cherish the old rug it crawls till my trope at last I lay down. I will clean. To the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. 
till my trouble. These at last I lay down, and I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. The most important part of that song is I will cling. <laughs> I'm not done preaching. I can't be done preaching yet. But I will cling to the old rugged cross. Jesus said this phrase, it's a similar phrase. To, in six different times in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I want McKenna to come. She's the first one. Amen. McKenna. Matthew 10, 38, right in front of the cross. Turn and look at them, please. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Can you read it again? And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. McKenna, if you would, set your Bible down. And I want you to take that cross and I want you to walk with it. And Hannah, you're next. Hallelujah. She has to take her little walk first. Don't have to go too far. Go ahead, Hannah. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If my men will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. All right. Go take the cross from McKenna. CJ, come read your scriptures. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And when he called, and when he had called the people unto him, his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever come after me, let them deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And take the cross from Hannah. Just start where she's at. Sydney, my friend. Hallelujah. Mark 10, 21. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, Sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. Christian. Hallelujah. Luke 9, 23. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Hallelujah. Brother Steve, you may have to chase it for that cross. Hallelujah. Take your time. Hallelujah. Luke fourteen twenty seven, And whosoever does not bear his cross can, and can come after me, cannot be my disciple. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At last, indeed, Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred for such a worm as I, 
at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Dear Lord, I give myself away, tis all that I can do. And Where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. The title of my message was Take the Cross to Him. Whew. Whew. Who's going to take the cross to the schools? Ooh. Who's going to take the cross to the school? Who's going to take the cross to the street? Who's going to take the cross to the hospitals? Who's going to take the cross to the field, the mission field? Who's going to take it? I know that this is just wood and it's just a symbol, but oh, what it represents. What it represents, my friend. Amen. There's very few people coming to the cross anymore. Who is going to take it? The Lord himself said in those six different places, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. I was watching on Fox Nation a new documentary on George Washington. It's called George Revolution. I would highly recommend it. I did not know what George Washington went through. He lost his dad when he was 11. He lost his brother that took over the place for his dad when he was 20. In the early of French-American War, three different times he was defeated. He was completely run out. Someone said, why are you saying that? He did all that before the age of 27. He did not get married until he was 27 years old. When he married Mary, I mean uh, Martha, when he married Martha, she gave him some more stability. What was he doing? He did, in the next 20 years, what he was doing at Mount Vernon, he was going back all the years that he was carrying his cross. He would tell people that he could see God in all those tears carrying his cross. We would not have America. I firmly believe we would not have the United States of America. We would have lost the first war. It would not be nothing if that man wouldn't have carried his cross. 
If I had time, I would tell you about another president called Abraham Lincoln. And in his young years, what he went through with his dad, he was orphaned kind of. His mother died. He grew up. He learned to carry a cross. I'm asking you today, who among us will deny themselves? Them guys become the most famous people in the history of America. But they both denied themselves and took up a cross. They didn't understand it at the time. Who will take up the cross? I'll never forget, and I'm closing. And I'm going to let each one of you come up here and do whatever you want with this cross. I was in Bible college, and this song came out. And I was sitting in a service, and this song came out. It's called, We Will Carry the Cross. And I sat there. And the words, I will carry his cross. I will go through the flame. I will go through the darkness in the light of his name. To the glory of God is seen round the world. I will carry the cross of the Lord. And I was about 19 years old. And the Lord got a hold. I said, I'll carry the cross. Hallelujah. And I ain't always been perfect. I've fallen and had to repent and I've laid. Amen. Sometimes in my sin. Amen. But when I would get up, the Lord would put that cross on my shoulder and say, just go one more step, one more mile, one more. Amen. We have got to carry our cross and take the cross to somebody. This church is imperative. Amen. We are at a crossroads. It is imperative that we carry His cross of the Lord. Amen. We got communion coming up, but I want to give this time. Amen. Who wants to? I know this, this, this is just a symbol. But who wants to come and touch this cross? Who wants to come and recommit to this cross? I know it's just. So was a brother told him that's silly. No, it's not. Amen. I don't have to do that. No, but you sure are being tugged. Your heart's stuck. I don't want to step out. I know you don't want to. And if you don't want to, you are the one that really, really needs to be up here. It's not me, Pastor Tom. This ain't how I work. Amen. So you say you'll cling to the old rugged cross, but you can't get past your emotion. Amen. Who wants to come and touch this cross this morning right before we take communion? Amen. Hallelujah. You want to come up front and just recommit to the cross of Christ. There's plenty of room. We got a lot of room up here. The whole church can come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. My God, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith, I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day at the cross, at the cross, 
where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now Hey, everybody, thank you so much for being with us today. We hope you've enjoyed this. And listen, the most important thing about this is if you do not know Jesus, ask him into your heart. Pray that sinner's prayer. If you need to contact me, by all means, please contact me. Uh, if you've got questions, we believe God. Don't matter where you're at in the world, we will make contact back with you. And we appreciate your giving. Uh, this kind of thing does cost a little bit of money. And we're asking for help. You can help us. We've got all the information with our Tithely. You can send money through there. Uh, we appreciate your prayers and your response and for just liking us. Spread the news. Tell everybody that you know that Jesus saves and he's coming soon. Now remember, friends, this is the first day of the rest of your life. Go live it for the Lord.